Hello guys and welcome to Gina's Natural Way. So we're going to do our book reading for the day. It is The Armor of God by Priscilla Schreier. If you have not checked out the other videos, you need to do that first because we're already on day four, which is bait selection. Okay. So also just keep in mind that we do have our live videos where we discuss our Bible study questions and just kind of discuss the book on Thursday and that way you guys can type in and I'm, you know, I, I... okay, so you can go ahead and watch that live on my Facebook group. Make sure you join the Facebook group. I'll leave a link in the description box. And then also we start our gratitude challenge tomorrow. So if you have not purchased your book. You gotta hurry up and purchase it. You can purchase, I think you can download it. I think it's either $5.99 or $3.99. You can just download it and be ready for the challenge on tomorrow. And that's in one of the Facebook groups too. I'll leave a link today on that as well, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. So I want to first start off reading um, Elsa McSweeney. She's on the Facebook, but she wrote this today and she was she wrote this earlier today. And I thought it was just an awesome testimony. So I want to share it with you guys because I want you guys to understand the devil is not happy with you. He's not happy with me. He is not happy that we are learning and exposing the things that he's doing. So we're learning his strategies. We're learning how to go into war. We're learning to see him and know him. And so because we're learning this, he's going to try to bring different things to us. Okay. So let's talk. Let me read this to her. It says, good morning, Gina. I felt led to share this with the group of those who are doing the armor of God series just this last Wednesday. I want to expose the enemy and his lies. I was inside my parked car at the park. And I had about 45 minutes before I had to pick up my son from school. So I decided to go to the park and finish the two questions from the Armor of God series that we're on. Well, I left my window rolled down while reading, studying, when this guy, who looked like he was between 18 and 20 years old, he came out of nowhere, came up to my side of the car, real sneaky, and I didn't even hear him. He came to my window, his hands were down, and he said, excuse me, ma'am, and then said something gibberish that I couldn't even understand. And he had a small gun in his hand. It looked like a real gun, but pulled the trigger and this confetti came out. So it was a play gun. I said, how immature. And he ran laughing and got in a car with the girl that was laughing as well. And they took off. Now here's the thing. It didn't scare me one bit. But what it actually did was made me hot mad. I started my car, pulled out my phone camera ready. I was going to go follow this car and get close enough to get his license plate number. And I thought to myself, how many times has he done this? He needs to get caught. At that moment, I looked at my time and I had to make a choice to either try to follow this car or go pick up my son like I needed to while making the decision to go pick up my son. Like I needed to. While making the decision to go pick up my son, I glanced and saw my index card of where I wrote, not the real enemy. Because if you, I was on the live video and she said she was telling me that where she wrote in her car, not the real enemy so that she wrote like in some postcards or posters or something. So that way she would know if something happened, it was not the real enemy, right? She says, I realized with my spiritual eyes who the real enemy was working behind it all. And that's when I became hot mad. I tell you, the spirit of God rose up in me and I began to pray in my heavenly language, rebuking the words of the enemy. I was shouting, speaking God's word. Here was the enemy changing his tactics. Well, if I couldn't get her to quit and give up after these last two and a half years, I'll, um, if making her tired and worn out didn't do it, let's see. Well, maybe fear will do it. So the devil tried to come at her with something else. Why? Because the other one didn't work, right? So the enemy does not like the fact that we are learning about his devices and how to operate and how he operates and the tools of becoming mighty women and warriors for God. And I find that it's no happenstance or coincidence, but by divine appointment that all of the Bible studies, I was looking at this one happened to be the one that kept sitting, stirring in my spirit. Then a week later, she said, I, Regina, came out and said that, what did I think about this book? Because she was thinking about studying this book. And then all of a sudden I just came out and said it. I find that churches don't talk about spiritual warfare, let, an, let alone teach you the tools in depth. This book has been amazing, okay? And then she goes on to just say some very, uh, almost like a prophecy to me. And I do receive that prophecy that you gave me. Um, so 
let it be known the devil is going to I will share with you guys as we get on in this video here how the devil is still trying to come at me with different stuff uh, because that's just what happens he's not very happy that we are learning this and he's definitely not going to be happy with me for reading it and giving you guys like different things to like saying different stuff he's definitely not happy with me so of course he's going after me so let's go ahead and get started all right, so my sons and I enjoy fishing. Our neighbor's pond across the street afford us ample opportunity to toss in the line and hope for a few small sun perch. I'm no serious fisherman, mind you. No live world worms for me. Our bait is left over, hot dog meat from the refrigerator. It usually does a trick, at least at the pond in our house. But last summer, we visited a Christian camp that circled a massive lake stocked with larger varieties like bass and catfish. My boys and I, of course, couldn't pass up the chance to try for a bigger catch, but we weren't having much luck until a man fishing near us saw my sad excuse for a bait and offered to exchange it for something better. He dislodged a tiny perch that one of my sons had just reeled in, affixed it a much sturdier hook on the line, and then did something shocking. He gashed that poor little fish right into the hook as bait. Try it now, he said it. Oh, we were all thoroughly flabbergasted and grossed out. Actually, it was just me. My boys were thrilled by the whole bloody mess. But sure enough, when we cast that perch into the water, my 11-year-old was soon reeling in a five-pound bass. A change in bait had changed everything. Just like how she said he was trying a different way for two and a half years. And he said, that didn't work. So I'm gonna try to get her with this gun situation. I'm trying to get her angry. Says the enemy is a master at choosing the right kind of bait to snag you. Sure, he uses some overarching one size fits all tactics to disarm God's people in general. But he doesn't use only one type of bait for every person or even the same type of bait for any one individual over time. No, he carefully considers and calculates your current situation, taking into account your weakness and your strengths, your interests and tendencies, your history, your past abuse, everything. So he knows which ways to get you. Then utilizing this available information, he crafts a specific strategy to hook you in and reel you in. Don't believe it. If you look carefully, you'll notice that the battles your enemy wages against you, especially the most acute, consistent ones, possess a personality to them, an intimate knowledge of who you are, and the precise pressure points where you can most easily be taken down. Random accident? Lucky guess? I don't think so. These areas of greatest fear and anxiety in your life are clues to some important spiritual information. They reveal, amongst other things, that a personalized strategy has been put in place to destroy your vibrancy and render you defeated. It's been drawn up on the blackboard by someone who knows from experience how best to exploit your areas of vulnerability. And I shared, I think a couple weeks ago, a story with you all about my sister-in-law who was really, really rude to me um, at her daughter's wedding. And so I didn't even realize that I I still had feelings, like I still disliked this girl because of it. Because I thought it was all good to be cleansed, you know, I don't want to forgive everybody. But when I was around her, I felt uncomfortable and I, I felt myself like getting smart with her with everything she was saying. And I felt myself just getting upset you know and after that I like I was telling sharing with you guys I had to go and I had to go to her and I said listen I forgive you of what you did years ago this was many years ago and I hadn't even seen the girls like she's my sister-in-law but we had because of that incident my husband didn't really talk to her anymore I didn't talk to her obviously I mean it was just it was something really big <clears throat> and distasteful what she did and so um I didn't realize I still had those feelings so I had to go and I recognized that it was a devil. And I went and I told her, I forgive her. And so at that point, she wrote me back and said what she had to say. And that was it. So I'm happy to report yesterday she had a graduation. And um, no, yeah, it was yesterday. She had a graduation. She got her master's degree. She went back to school again. And my husband said, you sure you, you okay with going? I said, babe, I'm absolutely fine. 
and we went and I gave her the biggest hug ever and I told her congratulations and we talked about even getting together again. So I stopped the devil in his tracks. I exposed the enemy and I, I just stopped it because that's what he wants. I mean, to bring up something from that far, uh, uh, that was a long time ago, you guys. And I hadn't even seen her. I didn't even know I had a problem. And to bring that, because he wanted me to get smart with her like I did. He wanted it to go into a full-blown argument and to, for other sisters to get involved. And I stopped it in his tracks. So praise the Lord for that one. That's the biggest thing is learning who the enemy is. That This is so helpful, right? Once you become aware of the enemy's strategy and begin to see his handiwork beneath the surfaces, so we have to see it beneath it, of your most trying life circumstances, you can not only begin to target the right culprit, but you can also start foreseeing some of his intentions and attacks. Then you can be prepared beforehand, giving him little room to make you a casualty of war. Now, I told y'all the reason why the thing came at me like that was because I had a problem dealing with anger and just rage and um yeah i was not very i didn't have he knew where i was at so he was trying to get some situations to arise in me and i didn't allow that okay so it says listen to me satan is tricky but he's not original or particularly creative he's always had the same basic game plan. And if you're watching, you'll see that sometimes the areas where he's targeting you are the ones you'd already expect. But by being proactive in prayer and girding in your spiritual armor, you'll be able to detect the secret plans before the attack unfolds and you can sabotage his efforts to deceive you and disable you. So you have to stop him in his track just like Elsa did. And she said, wait a minute. And she went right into prayer because she looked up at that card and said, not the real enemy. So she saw, soon as he started coming, she saw, she's like, uh-uh, this is what he, he wants her to get mad. And she said she was hot mad. I guess that's like Christian cussing, <laughs> hot mad. So she was hot mad, y'all. And so she turned that thing around and got hot mad at the devil, right? So she saw him, seen him, and stopped him in his tracks. I'm not saying the devil is not an enemy. I'm just saying we give him far too much credit for being impossible to defend and to defeat, right? Most of the reason why he gets the best of us so often is because we make his job too easy for him. So let's try making it a little easier for on ourselves instead. I believe we can boil down his playbook to just a couple of main attack strategies and to decode them, all you need to do is ask yourself two questions. In what ways do I pose the biggest threat to the enemy and his purposes? So you got to figure out what are some ways that we're doing this, right? The enemy will always seek to hinder you in areas where you are keeping his goals from being accomplished. So you're not letting him do what he wants to do. Are you particularly vocal about your faith, right? So are you going around witnessing and telling people? Then he may agitate fear or insecurity in you. So you'll keep your mouth closed. Is your marriage strong? Oh, a good model of stability for other couples? Mm-hmm. Then he will try to detour one or both of you away from each other through illegitimate entanglements. Satan will predictably want to cripple you in the area of your life where doing so will most directly defame God and hinder his church. Let me tell y'all this testimony. I'll just try to be as open as possible um, because I'm human. We're all human. Everybody here, sometimes you might have some pastors or preachers that try to act like they're they're not human, but the devil comes at them more. When you get ready to do something or if you if you try to uh, let others know or you're trying to minister some things of what you went through, the devil tries to stop you. So you guys know I'm working on this book, Rekindling the Fire, right? This marriage book. My husband and I do not argue. I mean, we don't argue. We don't, we don't do none of that. We have no problems. We have a the best marriage ever. There was a time where in writing this book, I was like, what is going on? Like it would be little bitty things that either I'd say it wrong or my husband would take it wrong or he just little bitty bitty stuff. And all of a sudden I could hear the devil speaking to me. You know how he just kind of whispering your spirit. Should you be doing this? 
Should you be writing this book? Looks like you don't even have your own marriage together now, do you? Right? So I could hear the devil talking to me. So I, I'm i not one for keeping secrets. So I went to my husband because I'm going to expose the enemy. And I said, babe, I said, do you think I should be doing this book? Do you think? And he's like, what? He's like, are you serious? And so right then and there, we got the enemy out in, in the public. And I told him, I said, this is what's been happening. And so I told him about what was happening. And we went into prayer and we stopped that thing in the tracks. Because that's exactly, he wanted us to start fighting. He don't He don't want anything to get out because he knows once these couples get a hold of this book, he knows that he's going to have to stop divorce, stop arguing, stop cheating, stop uh, all these different things through this book because God's blessed me, right, with the words to say and the things to do. So he wants to stop me. So he wants to stop you too. Whatever you're doing, he's going to try to stop you, right? Okay, so let's keep going. It says, here's a recent example from my own life. One of the most exciting and shocking things the Lord has ever called me to do in the ministry was participate in a movie called The War Room. I'm sure y'all seen it. I was stunned speechless when the directors, Stephen and Alex Kendrick, called to see if I would consider acting in it. Me? An actress? I laughed out loud, like for real. But when I found out the message of the movie... Uh, was about the power of prayer and standing firm against the enemy, I reconsidered. Several weeks before filming started, one of them sent me an email detailing some ways to prepare for this experience. Here's a portion of it. We have had spiritual attacks on all of our movies. The theme of this movie is on calling the body of Christ among the nations to their knees in strate strategic prayer. The devil is not happy about it. And now that you're joining the team, don't be surprised if the enemy drops unusual family, relational, or health problems in your life. Don't worry, just prepare. God is greater than anything the enemy attempts. So they already knew what happened. They were just kind of warning her, get ready for havoc to take place in your life. Bottom line, anticipate the enemy to hit you in the area of your greatest influence. And boy, were they right. The enemy came after her family with a vengeance, disagreements, short fuses, hot feelings, even having been forewarned. So even her marriage just began, you know, just began. Wow. I didn't fully realize how that summer of on-site shooting would affect some of our relational dynamics. Never has one family endured as difficult as a stretch as during the summer of shooting that movie. Wow. So the whole family just began to have problems, which among other things dealt with preserving unity in one's family. But that's just the way our enemy plays. Dirty, but not with being dis, um, decipherable. Consider where you're feeling the strongest these days and expect to take some hit at those particular areas. Woo! Y'all sure y'all want to continue with this book? <laughs> I just got to stop for a second because did we even know it was all of this when we started this book? Did we even know what we were unlocking or taking the covers off? Right? Do we even know what, what we were about to get hit with? Oh, the devil is not happy, y'all. Let me tell you, I even had a dream the other night, a couple of nights ago. I had a dream that it was like a family member of mine, my family, not my husband's family, it's my family member. And this person was kind of doing, she was, she was kind of like talking, like I could hear her saying, like just, but I thought she was praying. Like I thought it was a gospel prayer like over me, but she was making me do stuff, like making me do things and continue making me do things. And I was like, what is happening? Like what's happening? So then finally, um, she, something, she, she kept, she could have made anybody else do it, but she chose the person who was her family to do this. And I remember she told me to go and feed a cat, feed a cat. So I kept feeding a cat. There's one cat. But as I kept feeding the cat, more cats started coming and more cats and more cats and more cats and more cats. Like they were almost like attacking me. Like cats were everywhere. And I was like, what the heck? And I just remember God saying, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So I began to speak. I said, wait a minute. God got more power than the devil. Because at that point, I realized that it was not coming from God. It was coming from the enemy, the prayers. So it was like she was speaking praying these words over me or speaking these words. 
And so I begin to bind the devil. I begin to say, uh-uh, I bind you. And the cats begin to go the opposite way. They begin to flee from me. And I remember I walked through as all the cats were going everywhere. I walked through and I remember I went up to her and I said, um, I said, I am your family. Why would you do this to me? Why would you, I couldn't understand why would you do this to me? And I remember I told her, I said, why would you do this? And I was so hurt and I felt that anger once again that I told y'all that I had where normally I would have just choked her. And I remember it rose up in me and I said, I will not let you bring me back to where I used to be. And I said, I'm done with you. You're dead to me. It's over. And I remember I took off and I left, right? And so Maybe God is just showing me that the devil is after reading this passage right here, that the devil really is trying to get me back to where I used to be. Like he's really trying hard to get it to come out. Right. And I keep saying, nope, it's gone because I've been delivered of it, but he still keeps trying to bring it back to me. But yeah, I had that dream a couple nights ago. Okay. Let's keep going. What are my flesh's tendencies, innate passions and weaknesses? Okay. We're almost done here. Every human being has proclivities, a bent towards particular taste and interests, passions, and curiosities. Some good, but maybe some bad, or at least sensitive, perhaps embarrassing things we don't like others to know about us. And those predispositions and weaknesses are the ones the enemies will seek to exploit. Well, I'm going to tell my business, right? Whether they come from your upbringing, your inborn personalities, or vulnerabilities, Created by events in your life, these appetites of yours inform the enemy's bait selection when targeting you. And when you combine the suite of selections with his um, knowledge of just the right time to tease them out, you know as much or more than he does about how he may be planning to attack you at your most susceptible moments. One of my sons, for example, has always been prone towards fear and anxiety. Ever since he was a small child, he leaned towards just this emotional response to external stimuli. Knowing this, I've been very specific in praying for him. Even when he was a tiny baby, I routinely asked the Holy Spirit to instill courage within him, protection against the enemy's attempt to exploit his bent in his direction. I also speak God's word out loud over him regarding his position and power in Christ. An opening Satan will use to get at my son's heart to cripple him if we let him, if we don't know where to be watching. What about you? If alcoholism runs in your family, you know the enemy will likely be looking to destroy you through um, what's perhaps a sensitivity in your mind towards addiction. If promiscuity has been a part of your history, he'll want to keep that fire burning in your body while sending enticing offers to lead you astray, right? Keep a close eye on the areas of your greatest strength and your areas of your greatest weakness, y'all. Have your eyes open. They are likely the place where you can expect the enemy to target his attacks against you. When you know where to look, oh, you can see him coming a mile away. He's really not that clever. He's just cunning. But his number's up with you and me. Be ready, be prayed up, and stand your guard. Oh, so good, y'all. So good. Don't get scared, y'all. Do not get scared. You just have to be prayed up. Right, like Elsa says she wrote, not the real enemy. Know the real enemy behind it and go directly into prayer. At the moment it happens, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Devil, I see you and I know you and expose him for who he is. That's the bottom line right there. All right, so this is gonna be, we're gonna talk about this um, on in our homework session on Thursdays, but I'm just gonna let you guys know these are some of the enemy strategies that he uses against you. Number one, against your passion. Number two, against your focus. Number three, against your identity. Number four, against your family. There's so many women that always email me or IM me talking about their 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 spouses is cheating or leaving or marriage. He comes again, he comes hard for the family. Against your confidence. How many people have low self-esteem? Against your calling. You think that you're not good enough or you can't do this, right? Against your purity against your rest and contentment, against your heart and against your relationships. So those are just some of the things we're gonna discuss all of that in the Thursday night Bible study. Y'all, this was a deep session. 
is getting deeper and deeper every single week. Every single week. Let me pray. I want to pray for you guys because I don't want anyone to be afraid of like thinking of that the devil can overtake you or, or you know, waiting on the devil to do that. Because just like the dream that I told you guys that I had, I wasn't scared when that was happening to me. But God wanted me to see and to know greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You don't have to worry about no devil. You ain't got to worry about the devil coming after you because you got all, everything you need is right inside of you. Right? If you pray it up, if you read the word, if you know the abilities that God has given you, you don't have nothing to worry about. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this word. What a powerful, wonderful, wonderful word. Help us to know the enemy, to see him, that he is the real enemy. I don't care, Father, not our husbands, not our children, not our bosses, not, 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 not things, not strangers, not, they're not the real enemy. God, help us to be able to see, identify, and stop them in his tracks. No longer will we sit back and allow the enemy to tell us what to do. But just like you told me, just like I had the power that you've given me in my dream, that when I begin to speak, Everything ran from me and I began to walk over to the person and tell that person, tell that enemy, you are dead to me. I am done. You will not bring me back to where I used to be. Whoa, hallelujah. Oh, we thank you for that. In Jesus name. Wow, y'all, I was just getting like a revelation and just seeing things even as I was just praying that from that dream y'all that is amazing wow like God always deals with me in dreams he always deals with me in dreams a lot of times but whoo this is good y'all like I said we start our gratitude journal challenge on tomorrow I'm excited about it I'm happy about it I'm looking forward to it this is just the beginning that's all I'm going to say. God bless y'all. Y'all have a good night. Bye, guys.